graces the halls of our Lord, and with his passing, our great country lies devastated and vulnerable. My lords, with no air, the line of Uta has ended, and England awaits a new king. I beseech you to institute a new bloodline upon the throne, one which has the ability to lead our country during this period of darkness and deliver us to the light. Your words be true, Diana. But who amongst us is worthy to bear the crown of England? How do we decide? I believe that if I was made king, I could rule a majestic country in a just and fair manner. I make this offer out of my duty towards this land and its people. It would be my honor to serve this country. Honor? Duty? Speak not such words to this council. We know the true extent of your treachery, you snake. Uta do not trust you, and neither do I. Calm yourself, Nantris. You know not of what did you speak. Ponder on your words before uttering such blatant lies in the presence of Excalibur, whose blade is as sharp as the day it was forged. Do well not test it. Do not presume that I will permit your threats to pass the unchallenged. You are not worthy to hold Excalibur, and if you dare to usurp the throne from the rightful heir, you shall see the wrath of the people of England. <laughs> Rightful heir? Who? Arthur? He is just a boy and nothing more than a bastard. He has no claim to the throne. Besides, if the babe desires to stake his claim, where is he? Do not think to utter his name. Your venomous fangs are capable of only treachery. No doubt you plan to murder a child to realize your desire. Diamond is right, Antris. If Arthur is to be king, he must be present at this table. Where may I ask? Is he? This country is a strong hand to guide it in this modern era. The time of weak and indifferent things must come to an end. My lords, we need to enable the beginning of the golden age. We need to protect our way of life and rebel invaders who dare cross our borders. I am capable of leading this country in such a manner. I can save us from the brink of disaster. If my brethren join me to save our country, support my claim, and I shall ensure that your coffers never go. You are inexperienced in the matters of the state. We need to make rational decisions to prosper. Leaving things to chance would prove fatal to our country. You forget, Diamond. I was Uther's. And his most trusted confidant, I was privy to many of his secrets and learned of many truths of the country at that time. Wisdom is not born out of the knowledge of a few matters, and all encompassing mind is needed at this hour to handle the intricacies of kingship. Uther, as Uther was the king of Britain, and you are but one of the four lords who served him as his vassal. After spending years at his side, I know what kind of man is needed to lead us. There's only one man truly worthy of the mantle of king. He who has lived his life unlike any other. His days spent in the service of the people around him. And his dreams, pure and untainted by longing or greed. The only one truly worthy of Excalibur and the throne is the one who has never coveted it or the power that it carries. Violet, you are the only one worthy of Excalibur and the throne. I claim you to be our next king. King Marlin! 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 You will give that tottering fool the throne? He is oh, not. He is wiser than Diana could ever hope to be. Merlin, you have proven yourself to be a true guardian of the realm. You took 
action and prevented great conflicts and fought for this country during times of great peril. You always were and are meant to be king. Just. I pledge my fealty to you, King Merlin. The words of law and a queen ring true. You provide stability while Arthur grows up to take his rightful place. So it is that I swear to be loyal to you. King Merlin! This cannot be! Britain will not recognize this false king. His cowardice will tear this entire country apart. I will not. My lords, dear friends, I cannot accept your oaths of loyalty. Though your intentions are noble, this can never be. I have seen too much war and do not wish to shed that again by my own hands or otherwise. The fire in my blood is quenched and now I merely act as observer and advisor. We need a king who is fair but stern. One who is a warrior, but does not seek war. One whose wisdom will match out of Solomon the wise, for the hopes and dreams of the generations to come will ride on his shoulders, for he will bear the weight of the world and yet stand taller than any other. Huh. Looks like Diana was right about you, Merlin. You're too much of a craven. And I know why they said you're so wise for so long, but all your companions lie dead. You prolong your life by sacrificing the people around you. You stand today on a mountain of corpses. The dead who are full struck fought for you, and who are just as cowardly as their leader. Your trickery has lulled the masses. Did you believe in that you possess the magic of the druids? A false idol. You are not worthy the wise man. <laughs> no. More apt name to you would be Merlin the trickster mage. <laughs> you sit on lofty thrones and think you may comment on the battles of the past? The sacrifices my companions and I have made are things petty men such as you could never understand. You make tips about the past you fail to realize, and in your failure you do not understand the perils that are awaiting the strike. Treacherous desire has consumed you and blinds you. No more. Throne shall only be taken by one who is worthy of it. For it is time to end this vicious cycle. Oh, Stop that man. Man. We have 200 bowmen left and 3,000 spearmen. Our cavalry numbers at 300. We have more than enough to carry out a siege on this captured castle. We can effectively use the tribute and the capital to destroy the Saracens who untrained in siege warfare. We could either pay them out for a year or attack at this very moment. We would be at an advantage on either foot. I urge you to reconsider your decision to carry out on a full-scale attack. I believe we may be able to deal with this diplomatically. The Saracens are heathens who threaten our very way of life. They worship false gods and are known to resort to brutal tactics and cannibalism. Do not believe in gossips and fairy tales. They may be savages, but they see sense in not fighting us. I have an envoy ready to treat with them. Enough! We will attack at first light and repel these invaders from our lands for the final time. King Arthur, there is a man here who says that there is wanted information regarding the siege. King Arthur, I am Lord Ross. I have come from the Saracens preparing to attack from behind. They swam from the moat and have almost marshaled enough forces for their attack. Their intention is to scatter the capital frenzy and then begin a frontal attack. Even with their fewer number, they could crush your seed by bringing fight to you. Lancelot. Lancelot shall verify your claims after organizing the forces. If he is right, then we will have to begin our attack now. My lord. I doubt the veracity of his claims. That's enough, Mordred. If his words prove true, that you would be wrong as to the nature of these Saracens. Misjudging the enemy can prove fatal to any war effort. Look at Lancelot. With one look, he's able to understand my intentions. That is why he's my most trusted knight and military commander. If my words prove false, permit me the honor of 
and leading the attack so that I may make up for my words and my actions. No, Lancelot will handle the assault. You will be in charge of guarding the supply train. If it comes to a battle, you shall not have any active involvement in it.
matter what I have, I will never be in a position of power. Looks like I have run out of ale. Would you like to come and get some more with me? Somehow I'm enjoying this conversation. Well, why don't you go? I'm afraid I have to attend the most urgent telephone. I shall join you in a while. You don't drink too much without me. Now answer me with the truth. 
did you come in such an heinous act? You would dare come to my hall and accuse me of being a hypocrite and an adulterer. You dare presume too much, my lord. Speak not to me without first presenting proof. I knew you would lie to me. And thus, I have no qualms of the actions I take. Madness, you believed our king to be unholy and just, and you did hear his statement just now. <coughs> king Arthur, you banished Lancelot because he dared approach Queen Guinevere. Your punishment was wise, just as it was merciful. Why must Lord stand there and accuse you in such a manner? My king, I present my proof. A cloth embroidered with your sigil. How may I ask did this happen to be in the possession of my wife? You commit the same crimes that you punished Lancelot for. How is this justice? How are we to interpret your hypocrisy? I am the king, and you serve me. I do not need to justify my actions to my vassals. Lancelot undermined the integrity of our kingdom and sought to dishonor my name. He has been banished by my command. His title and property has been stripped from him, and he is to never return on pain of death. Lies! Lancelot is dead. I saw King Arthur kill him with my own eyes. He stabbed him from behind and tossed his body over the walls of Camelot. I have in my possession the sword of Lancelot. And I wondered, what is the meaning of this? It is a revolution, my king, to save Britain from a despot. Hold! Traitors! You would die and betray your king! You don't know the kind of man that you saw. He is a tyrant who seeks to be the symbol of hope and justice, yet he cannot justify his actions. How can a man such as he deserve to sit on that throne? Seize the law! My king! You will let the man speak, or else our armies will lay siege to Camelot within the next day. As you all know, I am the elder brother of Uta. But I was never to be king, as I was born a bastard. From the very day I was born, I was taught I could never have the throne. And today, another bastard stands before you and professes to be king. He was merely chosen to be king. He was merely chosen to be. What is that craven now? He's fled the consequences of his actions while we stand here and wonder. What is going on? It is time to be united against this false king and murder. I call to you for the sake of this country. Come and join me. I risk control of our country. Drown this madman and rebuild it in your strong and united nation. that cannot be ignored. 
You are the usurper! As a bastard, you have no claim to the throne. Merlin chose you to be king. He argued with words divine right, but I say nay. This right is not full of Merlin's deceits. Merlin chose you to be king the moment you were born, even though you were born a bastard. Ah! 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 You don't you? You're just a false idea! Created to conform the world to your ideas of virtue, honor, and, and chivalry. Merlin would have fought stupid in this kingdom for centuries. And your misdeeds would have, would have been trivial facts that the history would ignore. <laughs> but your false way of values would have lived on. Falsehoods! You lied to justify your own greed. You would have been king if my father Uther had not been born. You shall need your hand here, and they shall sing no songs of you, but words of cowardice and treachery. to be more than enough to assuage 
mountain of God with the 